Today's project is going to be this little guitar music stand. It's for those of you that love music and the guitar in particular, as well as woodworking. I'll show you how to make it step by step. The pattern called for half inch material for the backer. I had some four quarter sapele on hand and I planed some of it down to one half inch thick. I'm going to make three sets of these and I already printed out the patterns. I need to trim them a little bit to fit on this board. There are a number of methods for attaching patterns to wood, and I'm using my favorite here, scroll saw tape. It's a two-sided tape that rolls onto a board, and then you trim it to width using a utility knife. Once the entire surface is covered, you flip the board over, peel off the backing, and attach the patterns. In order to use the minimum amount of material possible, I arrange the patterns at a slight angle. There are times when the grain direction is critical, but many times you can attach patterns at an angle, or even so that the grain runs at a right angle. As you can see, after I attach the patterns, there are going to be some odd-shaped scraps left over after I cut out these three backers. I'll save the scraps, as I will certainly be able to use them to make little animals or something. At 950 a board foot, I don't want to throw away any more of this wood than I must. The pattern called for quarter inch material for the guitar, but my hardwood dealer doesn't stock much in the way of material that thin. I could have resawed some four quarter red oak, but I decided I wanted the guitar to be thicker than one quarter inch. I had a couple of half inch thick red oak boards left from previous projects, so I decided to plane them down to three eighths thick. The three eighths thick guitar will look good on top of the half inch backer. I used scroll saw tape to attach the guitar patterns to the red oak. I'll need to take those to the drill press to drill pilot holes for all the interior cuts. I'll start cutting with the top layer, the one with all the detail. This is one half inch thick red oak, and my experience tells me I should use a number five blade. I base my choice on the thickness of the wood, the hardness of the wood, and the complexity of the pattern. I'll leave a link to my video on how to choose the correct blade size on the screen and in the description. The Pegasus Modified Geometry Blade is my go-to series of scroll saw blades, and I'll leave a link to my source in the description. I always make the interior cuts first, and I started this piece with the top part of the treble clef. I drilled the pilot hole near the bottom of the large cutout, the top of the treble clef. The bottom of the shape comes to a point, so I cut from the pilot hole down to the point, and then I backed the blade to the pilot hole and spun the workpiece 180 degrees with the blade inside the pilot hole. Then I backed the blade through the curve it had just created to the point. From the direction the blade was now facing, it was easy to turn the workpiece to the angle I needed to cut. I followed the line up to the top of the shape, around the curve, then down the line on the other side, until I reached the point at the bottom where I started the cut. I used the same technique to cut the next shape since it also had a curve beginning at a point. Then I followed the straight line down to the point at the bottom of the shape. That led to a direction change of 90 degrees. I slowed this next section down and moved in for an extreme close-up so you could follow what I was doing more easily. When I came to the corner point, I stopped cutting and backed the workpiece up a tiny bit so it wasn't cutting. Then I swiveled the workpiece 90 degrees to the new direction I wanted to cut and then pushed the wood into the blade to start cutting once again. The rest of cutting this shape consisted of following a curve to an intersection, making a 90 degree turn, cutting a short straight line, making another 90 degree turn, then following another the curve, making another sharp turn, then following a short curved line. You should have picked up a pattern from this. A lot of scroll sawing means having to make 90 degree turns. For this reason, it's important that you learn this technique and become proficient at it. It's something you will be doing over and over again. There wasn't anything different to describe for this semicircle cut on the right side of the treble clef, so I'll skip to the next cut. This is an unusual shape, but there's nothing difficult to cutting it. From the pilot hole, I cut across the waist area to one of the long lines. I followed that to the bottom, where I had to make a 90 degree turn, cut a short straight line, then made another 90 degree turn. I followed my standard procedures for making these turns. The rest of the cut was a mix of angles and curves. 
If you're interested in making this project, you likely play guitar or at least have an interest in music played on the guitar. The next interior cut creates the shape for the pick guard. This shape is all curves and cutting it is a straightforward matter of following the line around until the cut is complete. After the pick guard, the next cut creates the bridge, the part where the lower end of the guitar strings are fastened. This was an easy shape to cut, and if you're not good at cutting sharp 90 degree corners yet, it won't matter if these come out more rounded than sharp. There are some musical notes depicted on the bottom of the guitar to give the display a little more of a music-inspired feel. Compared to the other interior cuts on the guitar, these are small, but I think they're within the reach of even a beginner on the scroll saw. Just take your time and let the blade do the work. These cuts are the last interior cuts for the guitar. Now we come to the exterior cut for the guitar and treble clef shape. This is mostly curves, but I like to start at a 90 degree intersection if there is one. I found one where the neck meets the body of the guitar. The reason I look for such an intersection is that if I start on a curve, when I cut around the outside and return to that spot, I frequently end up with a rough spot. As long as that spot is accessible, I can sand it off later, but I'd rather avoid creating the spot in the first place. The most difficult part of this exterior cut is without a doubt the tuning pegs. They're close together, so they require excellent eye-hand coordination. If you're new to scroll sawing and have a variable speed scroll saw like the Pegasus, you could slow down the speed. This will allow you to cut more slowly, and that will possibly make the task easier. I have thousands of hours of experience, so I can run the saw at full speed for most cuts. Now that I've completed the top layer with the guitar and treble clef shapes, I can move on to the backer. The backer is half inch thick sapele, a rich brown colored wood in the mahogany family. I'll continue with the number five blade I used for the oak top. The top will be glued to the backer and the backer will attach to the base with slot and tab construction. So I'm going to start cutting the backer with the tab on the bottom. I attached the pattern so the bottom of the backer was parallel to the end of the board. My first cut was one of the vertical lines for the bottom of the tab. I cut from the edge of the board to the intersection of that line with the horizontal line for the bottom of the backer. Then I made the cut for the parallel vertical line. Next I made the horizontal cut from the edge of the board to the vertical cut for the tab. This caused the waste piece from the cut to come loose so I could toss it into the wastebasket. I followed the same procedure on the other side of the tab. The round shape not far from the bottom of the backer was a little tricky to cut. Where it met the base there was a point, then a very sharp turn was required to start the circle shape. The curve was easy enough, but at the other end an extremely sharp turn was needed. From there on, cutting the back was just a matter of following gentle curves until arriving at the top, where a series of turns close together were needed to cut the shape for the tuning peg outline. After that, the rest of the cut was easy. I measured the thickness of the Sapele backer with a caliper after I ran it through the thickness planer, and it was exactly 0.50 inches thick. The width between the lines for the slot on this pattern is one half inch, so I'm going to cut right on the lines and that should give me the exact width I need for the tab to fit in snugly. I cut from the pilot hole to the near side, then along the line to the corner. At the corner, I used my standard procedure for making interior 90 degree turns. I eased off the pressure on the blade slightly so it was no longer cutting as I reached the intersection. Then with the blade still running, I pivoted the workpiece 90 degrees before starting to cut again. I followed the same procedure at each corner. With the slot cut, it's time for one of those moments of truth. Will the tab fit into the slot? It didn't. The width of the slot seemed to be okay, but the length was a tiny bit short. There are two possible ways to fix this. One is to make the slot longer, the other is to make the tab shorter. It's easier to trim a little off the tab, so that's what I did. I trimmed a bit off the tab, tried the fit, and found it was still too long, so I cut a little bit off the other side of the tab. The length was now okay, but it turned out that the tab was a smidgen wide. 
I turned to the counter next to the scroll saw and used a ruler and a pencil to draw a new cut line not much farther away from the original than the width of the pencil mark. I've done these by freehand cutting in the past and found that the cut sometimes strays a little, so now I take the time to draw an accurate line. After this cut, I made another test fit and this one looked good. As the saying goes, the third time is the charm. At least I think that was the third time. Maybe it was the fourth. The last cut for this project is the oval base. After I completed that step, I peeled off the pattern from the base, inserted the tab of the backer into the slot, and then held the guitar and treble clef front against the backer to get a feel for what the completed project is going to look like. All that remains is the glue up, then adding the finish. I enjoy the cutting step the most, but getting to this stage makes me start to feel a sense of accomplishment as everything starts to come together. Many of my projects involve gluing small parts together, and for them, I find this little glue bottle invaluable. It once held Elmer's glue, but once that was gone, I kept refilling it with white glue, which I purchased in Galen bottles. I can squeeze out glue in small beads through this spout, then use my fingertip to spread it around. There are a lot of little areas in between the cutouts that needed glue if this was to be a good glue-up. I spread glue onto these areas and also was careful to get glue close to the edges so the top and backer would stick together well. Once I had the glue distributed to my satisfaction, I grabbed some spring clamps. When you first apply glue, the surfaces are slippery and may want to move around, so you have to apply clamps carefully to ensure the parts don't get out of alignment. This is one of the reasons I like to use spring clamps when I can. They apply downward pressure, and pieces don't usually move laterally. When you use F-clamps, the screw tightening can move parts out of alignment if you aren't careful. The final step of the glue-up will be to attach the backer and display to the oval base. I noticed that the slot is not in the middle of the base from front to back. This makes sense because the display protrudes from the backer, so you want the slot a little closer to the rear of the base, and that way the backer is centered after you take the depth of the assembly into account. I made sure to orient the base correctly, taking this into account. I added glue to the sides of the slot, and then I spread glue onto the surfaces of the display that would be touching the base. That included all four sides of the tab and the bottom of the backer. I slid the tab into the slot, but there was no easy way to clamp the two pieces together, so I let gravity do the work. I finished this project with Minwax Warm Satin Spray Polyurethane. It will make a great display in someone's house or office. Playing guitar is one of my other passions in addition to woodworking. How about you? If you play guitar, is it acoustic, electric, or both? Let's start a discussion in the comments section. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked the video and consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. If you're still in the mood for more sawdust, links to a couple of videos you should watch next are on the screen right now.